Okay, class. Uh, uh, good morning. So uh, today we'll be discussing uh, some concepts on stability of plates, uh, which are actually very important in plate stability analysis. No, and this serves as actually the guiding principles uh, in the determination of the uh, uh, the weight to thickness. Uh, uh, limits lambda okay so so we are actually concerned more on the stability in terms of uh, the lambda okay with over uh, a thickness or limits so for the differential equation uh, of uh, homogeneous plates in terms of bending in general so we have here a three-dimensional view of a two-dimensional plate element okay or rather a three-dimensional plate element with a uh, a width and length equal to dy and dx and a thickness t so the this uh, coordinate system which is actually a right-handed coordinate system is uh, defined in terms of the global okay while this here uh, uh, which defines your local xy plane actually is oriented in the middle of the thickness of the plate element okay so take note that z here is positive downward because it has something to do with the displacement uh, normally uh, directed downwards when you are considering a beam problem so for the coordinate uh, for the deformation in the xy plane so this is a top view of your uh, three-dimensional plate element okay so your z is directed uh, uh, away from the screen okay so this shows z here so this is top view. We first define what are the original position at the undeformed state. So if these are the original corners at the undeformed state, we now have here uh, the corners of this uh, uh, strip. Okay, so plate two-dimensional uh, strip. Uh, uh, defined in terms of the corners and if we are going to look at the total displacement on the local u direction so this is now uh, u is actually uh, uh, a, a, a uh, local displacement directed at the x-axis and uh, v is actually a local displacement directed to the y-axis. In short, uh, U and V actually describes your displacement of the plate element locally. Okay, so the local variable are now U and V, such that uh, your slope for gamma one and gamma two, which defines the shear or deformation of such element will now be equivalent to a simple ratio of uh, delta v so this gamma one is said to be delta v over delta x there okay so uh, if we make this a short slope gamma one is simply uh, delta v over delta x which can be written in terms of this okay so this is simply delta v over delta x dx over dx so it's a portion it's a ratio, it's a percentage 
of the difference along the y-axis with that of the x-axis okay so this is just uh, like a percentage percent of the original length all over the length which is simply delta v or delta x so similarly uh, gamma 2 is taken as this slope here which is equivalent to delta u over delta y so for the um, for the individual uh, displacement of the corners let's say this is your corner number one and this is one prime this is two this is two prime so we can now define the the displacement of each and every corners in terms of the direction so the the, the on the direction y the displacement at corner one is simply u while in 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 uh, two the displacement is simply u plus this value which is simply delta u okay so this is u plus uh, delta u uh, where delta u is simply the partial derivative of x with respect to x so if you can if you want to cancel this is simply a delta u there but we, we have to write it in terms of partial derivatives because uh, we need to consider in our mathematical uh, formulation uh, that this is a uh, a two-dimensional uh, partial differential equation so this is uh, two independent uh, variables okay uh, x y so we need to, to come up with a more precise uh, mathematical expression in terms of this so so is true with your with your three so this is simply the uh, the vertical direction your your uh, uh, displacement is d and on the on, on on the corner number three the vertical deformation or displacement is simply b plus uh, delta v okay so this is simply d plus delta v where you can cancel if you want you can cancel this but again you have to place the expression into its proper uh, format so for the uh, succeeding expressions we need to to recall our 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 language in continuing mechanics in terms of your or strain displacement relationship now so epsilon x is simply the partial derivative of u with respect to x okay or simply written in this form again uh, u is a function of two var two independent variables uh, epsilon y is the same Okay, x, u are, are the global and the local directions, y and v are the global and the local directions. And of course, we have the shear uh, strain here, which is uh, simply a, a sum of uh, uh, these derivatives here. Okay, so this is simply uh, the sum of these two uh, strains. Uh, and I'd like to take note that this third relation is actually uh, twice uh, that of our shearing strain in continuum mechanics. So this is more of the strength of materials. So, 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 so this is just like uh, uh, looking into a picture where in the strain, the shear strain are... Okay. So this is now if you have a okay so this is now your your gamma okay your gamma x y okay, this is x and y 
Now, this is the, the particular definition of this gamma here, while in, in other, other uh, uh, references such as uh, those which, which uh, explains how continuum mechanics works, uh, if this is your y and x, your strain uh, relationship is actually the shear strain relationship is actually given okay. okay so the such that your your slope here is actually one half of gamma x y there so this is gamma sorry yes gamma x y over 2 and this is also gamma x y over 2 so it doesn't matter how you how you interpret the two what matters is uh, the final value you know that uh, when you're using uh, uh, gamma x y so this is actually your epsilon x y here this is your epsilon xy okay so epsilon xy and gamma xy is just related by the factor 2 when it comes to uh, the shear strain so and expressing the displacement in terms of the deflection of the plate we go now uh, this is actually a z axis so we we now go from top view to side view so this is the axis uh, this is not y okay so if you are going to the x and say your slope will be uh, x okay uh, sorry your, your variable your variable uh, of concern is no longer uh, x and y but x and uh, omega okay so omega or w such that your slope is simply the derivative of uh, the vertical all over the horizontal. Okay, so this now will give you, the slope will give you a, a, uh, a way of finding out what is this uh, depth here. Okay, at the distance the x of the plate. If this is now the plate uh, dimension, you can now make use of uh, the the slope formula multiply the distance with the slope you get the vertical displacement uh, and and so your total displacement will now be equivalent to omega plus this one okay so this now becomes your uh, uh, total displacement now, uh, where is uh, U and V coming from? If we try to project this, enlarge this, we, we take note that the slope here, this one, is equivalent to this slope here. Okay? So these are just uh, what uh, angles that are equivalent. And if we know the, the, uh, the, the depth, Z at a particular location from the neutral axis we can now make use of this as your u so u is simply the slope multiplied by the vertical distance z okay so u is simply a uh, slope which is uh, uh, partial okay so this is equivalent to saying that this is a partial derivative of x1 okay so it's just the same as this one here and so is true with the other axis if this is your uh, uh, y-axis so y and omega will be d omega dy xy so the negative sign here class simply states that your 
a uh, bottom bottom particle okay it is actually moving towards the uh, left if you have a positive bending scenario so this we are referring here to, to the particle below below uh, the neutral axis okay so uh, for okay for the uh, string displacement relation uh, above defined above we can now convert it into a much uh, uh, precise okay equation in this form okay so this is simply uh, partial derivative of this is simply the second derivative okay so this is u and this is the partial uh, this is now u if we take the the, uh, the derivative of uh, u here which is already differentiated once we can come up with a second derivative here and so it's true with this and so is true with this so here the derivative is actually the first derivative with respect to x and the first derivative with respect to y still the degree or the order of differentiation is consistent and making use of the Hooke's law uh, okay so i'd like you to recall again your continuum mechanics uh, derivation for your Hooke's law so in our, in our one-dimensional Hooke's law, uh, we simply state that uh, uh, what uh, stress is actually equivalent to modulus elasticity times strength. Okay. So here, in a in a three-dimensional uh, state of stress, uh, we have the generalized Hooke's law given by the formula uh, lambda epsilon kk dot delta ij plus 2 times mu dot epsilon ij uh, defines your uh, equations for your elasticity which is actually what uh, Young equations you don't know. so if you look at this if you iterate on this you will have actually a, a how many components so this is uh, i and j so we have uh, Three squared is nine, so we have actually nine equations that can be derived. But since we are only in a two-dimensional format, okay, we only have four equations. Okay, so this is uh, three squared is nine for a three D, so two D, so this four equations. But these four equations are up, the two equations are actually the same, so this will be reduced to three equations. Okay, because of uh, a symmetry. So we have only three equations involved, and if I iterate on such equations, I will get this equation by simply expanding it or iterate it i j equal one to two okay okay so this is sigma one one uh lambda plus uh, two mu okay so the, the mu here uh, is actually obtained from there then you have to iterate of course uh, one one there epsilon one one and then the epsilon uh, uh, 2 2 will actually be joined 
into this one because this is epsilon kk when it comes to 2. So if you know how to expand this uh, using continuum mechanics procedures, you will arrive with these equations. Of course, uh, there is no mu here. So uh, mu and the and the nu are Lame constants and this is the Poisson's ratio sorry the mu and the lambda are the Lame constants uh, that you have studied in your continuum mechanics and a nu here is simply a Poisson's ratio uh, which is actually related to these constants here so this Lamy constants now converted into a Poisson's ratio and the and the most common uh, common this property of uh, a material which is the modulus of elasticity. So uh, parang kinonvert mo lang yung yung mu and the lambda into e and nu or the elastic modulus and the Poisson's ratio. Okay, so upon uh, you will do a lot of this uh, when you have studied the uh, continuum mechanics, and of course, uh, this is the third one, which is the this two one here are the are the normal stresses, and this uh, one here are the uh, shearing stresses. So if you will look into the to the uh, element, uh, the two dimensional element, so we you have here uh your your shear okay and also the the normal stresses so you have here the sigma uh phase uh, what's this it's phase uh, two one and this is phase one two and this is uh, your your uh, sigma sorry Okay, so this is sigma 2, 2, and this is sigma 1, 1, and this is your sigma uh, 2, 1, 2 directed to 1, and this is sigma 1 directed to 2. Okay, or uh, normally these are the shear, they are called also tau, no? So the, you can place your tau if you want. Okay, in matrix form, you can convert this into this. So it's good to know how to do it in matrix because in your program, uh, matrix uh, computation is much easier than uh, to handle than a an iterative uh, procedure. Okay, Al although programs are are using, of course, loops and uh, iterations because matrix. Uh, 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 procedures in 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 computers are just derived from them. Okay, so this is the the uh, relationship between the Lamy constants and the the modulus of elasticity and Poisson's ratio. And if we go further, uh, solving for the stress in terms of strain here. Okay, so we just uh, come up uh, by substituting epsilon x, epsilon y, and epsilon x, y. So here, so we just substitute it there, relating the curvatures uh, into moments. So how do we relate the uh, uh, curvatures and moments? So we know for a fact that uh, uh, the curvature is simply your moment over the modulus the the flexural rigidity that we have studied in in rc or maybe we also studied this in structural dynamics okay okay so uh, there's a relationship that the moment and the curvature are just uh, the same therefore what is the only uh, adjustment you you can do here is to provide okay the moment arm okay so this moment arm refers to the particle distance from it's the vertical vertical uh, distance from 
the neutral axis to the uh, to the point of stress that you want to get okay so if you want to get uh, this you just substitute it here okay you just uh, make use of uh, this relationship and you will find out that uh, everything is just the same just put it there and oops it becomes squared here okay so we just uh, multiply the stress just like uh, taking a, a neutral axis the neutral axis and a and this is your particle stress so if you want to to define this as your z which is negative z okay so this particle stress here sigma whatever Okay, sigma x, sigma y, and tau x, y. Simply multiply it by z becomes z squared. Okay, of course you have to integrate to get the moment. We have to integrate all the stresses that supplied on the particle. This is assumed to be a continuum body. So you get integrated from negative t over 2 to positive t over 2. You get the moment. Okay, or of course, uh, if you integrate this, you will get a simple formula in terms of t. And uh, expanding this, you get uh, this individual formula for mx, my, and mxy. So for the plate bending, uh, if you want to, if you are not. Uh, uh, or if you are if you are confused with this uh, you can look at this portion here that's what I'm talking about the Sigma X it will define your moment no? uh, up, upon which uh, uh, your your beam behaves in terms of uh, bending at the neutral axis here and so is true with the taus the Sigma X and the taus will define your moment so this is now tau at the x phase directed at the y, tau at the y phase directed at the x, okay? So take note that the, the first subscript here is the phase, the phase variable. So this is a y phase, uh, sorry, this is an x phase and a y direction. This is a y phase, it's an x phase, it's a y phase. This is the direction. So we screw with this one. This is the x phase, uh, z direction. This is the the y phase. Uh, uh, sorry, the z phase, the x direction. So more or less, this is a top view, and this is a side uh, view. X side view. Okay. So if you want the y side view, there uh, you just make use of tau y z, tau z y. Okay, so this becomes a tau z y there, a tau uh, y z there. Okay, so this is how to 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 look into this. And if you are using Stad and all other softwares, they are actually using this a principle when it comes to stress analysis. So uh, to come up with the with the figure in terms of forces and moments, we can simply look at the, the cubical element, the plate element in this manner. Uh, instead of having the stresses, we now get the shear and the moment of forces. And we take note that the moment x, mx, is the bending moment caused by tau x, not the moment about x axis so pag sinabi mong mx class the the subscript there is along no? along the axis not about the axis okay so you 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 could be uh confused when it comes to the subscript involved 
and your m uh, mali ito this is myx not mxy okay myx okay this is m y face x direction okay so back at x direction because it, it is a uh, it is uh, what rotating it is rotating along the x along the x direction this is rotating uh, along the x direction although this is what this is a flexure this is a torsion okay so this is a shear related moment torsion this is a flexural related moment these are flexure of course on the other side there you have also a torsion that will counteract the torsion here and taking moments about uh, the y-axis because uh, our bending is more 